All right, hey everybody. This is uh, another test of the uh, little SJ4000 video cam with the uh, external mic mod that I did to it. Um, I'll have a description, I guess, later on in the link about it. <clears throat> Pretty simple mod. Just uh, followed a uh, teardown, SJ400 teardown that I saw on Google. And I think that was on the uh, RC groups. And he showed how to take the camera apart in pretty good detail. And I was able to use that as a basis on finding out where the uh, condenser mic was in the original camera. And essentially what I did is basically what we used to do with the old GoPros uh, without the external mic input was to um, uh, desolder the original microphone off the uh, circuit board and just wire in a uh, external mic uh, jack and that's really all there was to it this microphone that i have in here now is just a little inexpensive um, micro lapel microphone um, and it doesn't have any wind guard or anything on it it's actually tucked into my cheek pad on the left side of my uh, cheek pad and the uh, uh, the uh, foam padding of the helmet does a pretty good job at uh, muffling the wind. But I'm on my bigger bike now. This is a, um, the last video was on a little Chinese scooter that I have. But this bike is a uh, 2009 Hoisung GV650, or however you want to call it, Hoisung, Hoisung GV650. It's a uh, South Korean bike. It's uh, 650 cc's and it's a V-twin, um, supposedly a little over 70 something horsepower. Um, it's got pretty good pickup and go and I've had uh, pretty good luck with this bike. It's been a really good bike. It was uh, fairly inexpensive. The quality is pretty good. It's not perfect, but um, Anyway, we'll take her for, for a ri uh, ride around this uh, national park here. This is actually uh, Jefferson Barracks uh, National Cemetery over to my right here. And the park that I'm in now is uh, actually called Sylvian Springs Park, but we'll be riding into um, Jefferson Barracks Park. They're kind of all connected. And um, we'll, uh, we'll take a spin around the park, and we'll see how everything comes out. All right, here we go. I've had, had some problems here lately with this uh, left hand control here with the uh, blinker not resetting. Um, the controls aren't really the, the greatest of all quality. Um, so you'll see me routinely through the video just keep pressing that thing. Uh, mostly it was out of force of habit from when I first started riding. I kept forgetting to turn the blinkers off and now that I've got these newer bike bikes with the uh, cancellation feature on it it's kind of helped me out a little bit
So this park is uh, <clears throat> located in St. Louis County. Uh, it's actually, I guess, Lime. So there's the still active Jefferson Barracks. And they've kind of made some of these older buildings into, uh, like you see here, the Civil War Museum. I've been in that. It's really nice. And they're rehabbing this building here. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what the exact dates of some of these buildings are, but uh, you can Google the uh, Jefferson Barracks Park, and you can get a lot of uh, information on that. I think it was kind of a leaping point for the uh, some of the troops in the Civil War. I don't want to talk too much about it because I'll probably jack it all up. I'm more worried about not getting hit by deer. One, two, three deer, four, five. Let's take a little slow. Still scared them. <clears throat> so this is a really nice old park. I've lived in uh, St. Louis County all my life. I grew up here. And they're building a big water park over there. I just actually just found that out. It comes from not paying enough attention to what's going on in your community. But we recently had a son, and I've been kind of more focused on doing that stuff than riding around. But the park's been around for a long time. I grew up here. Uh, pretty much hasn't changed too terribly much. I mean, they added this big, huge uh, walking path around uh, the park. And it pretty much goes around the entire inside of the park. They've got all sorts of little pavilions and stuff around. Got some disc golf courses or frisbee courses up here. And I've had to watch out for a flinging frisbee at me a few times. <clears throat> so we'll go out at this uh, other exit of the park. And here is one of the old uh, century uh, guard I guess houses in the middle of the road here for it and then of course the rest of the buildings some cannons there there's another century house there so we'll go back into the park here hopefully I'm not sniffling and snorting too terribly much my sinuses have been really killing me lately. But they've done some upgrades to the park. They've added this uh, pretty long walk and trail, and it's really nice. They do uh, Civil War reenactments here and uh, World War II reenactments here that I really enjoy coming down to watch. And they've got a amplifier. Helmet smashing my cheeks and it's not letting me say it. They've got a big amphitheater up here with pavilions and whatnot. And they've had some concerts up here. They have a few little museums <clears throat> uh, in and around the park. Some of them are free and some of them are uh, privately owned. Uh, this one is a free museum up here. I think this is the old... I better just read the sign. This 
So the Powder Magazine Museum. It's a nice little museum inside and there's another one um, just right across over there that's basically uh, sort of the same deal. But it's a huge park. And every time I seem to be riding in it, it's like nobody here. But I have came down when there's concerts or the Civil War Museum, or I'm sorry, the Civil War reenactments or the uh, World War II reenactments. And man, it is packed. I mean, you can't even find a spot to park. People are parking on the street and half in the grass. Just cruise on through the rest of the park. Oh, I should have went down there. I've taken some pictures of this bike uh, right when I first got it down there at the old stables that they restored. And there's also an old, I think it was a tender's house. And yeah, we'll get some video of that next time, I guess just cruise to the park. I'm worried about it raining on me here. <clears throat> kind of out here up another deer. Kind of out here with no wet gear on. Just got my Kevlar pants on. Shirt. I go with that blinker again. Seems like it, it wants to cancel sometimes and the rest of the time there's a it's like a catch there. And I don't know if it's just the way that the that I'm hitting it or, or what the deal is, but um, sometimes it doesn't cancel. Like right there. I really gotta force it. Probably just something I can get in there and file down, but I'm not really worried about it. So anyway, yeah, this uh, it, as far as the bike goes, I know that there's probably gonna be people interested in the bike maybe uh, like I said it's a 2009 uh, Hoi Sung GV650 uh, at the time this was their only cruiser they have a uh, ST7 or the GV650 classic I think is what it's known as in the the rest of the world um, They have those. They have these uh, two big cruiser bikes now, and this is about the size of a uh, a V rod, maybe a little uh, smaller, but it's kind of proportioned the same. It, everybody calls it a V rod knockoff. Um, this bike's lighter and has damn near the same uh, acceleration times as the stock b-rod or i guess the original one this is supposedly supposed to be a legitimate 12 second bike i know it's a lot quicker than the 2008 triumph bonneville t100 that i had and i had a, a set of pipes on it and a jet kit and some other stuff on it uh, it was the last of the uh, carbureted bikes here in the United States, and it was pretty quick for what it was, uh, but this bike would eat it up. Uh, the, the T100 was a beautiful bike and would have been way more of a better uh, investment later on down the road. Actually, it was a great investment. Uh, I ended up uh, losing only $600 from what I bought that bike new whenever I sold it, but I have a partially torn ACL in this left knee and I've been kind of dragging it on for like the last seven or eight years and I tore that ACL right after I purchased that Triumph Bonneville new in October 
I thought. But anyway, I purchased that bike new and ended up hurting my leg and decided that <clears throat> I probably just better go ahead and mothball that bike. So I put it in storage in the basement, drained all the gas and overfilled the oil. And it sat for about two years after only putting about 700 miles on it. And it got to the point where I was doing some leg exercises and whatnot, and I decided that I was going to go ahead and get it out of storage and start riding it around again. I had bought some scooters and stuff, and I had been riding those. And they had these forward, uh, you know, seating position on our, I'm sorry, foot position. And I had been riding those to keep me from being rusty. I, I bought a 1986 Honda Helix and then a 2011 uh, SSR Rowdy. It's a Chinese uh, knockoff of the Honda Big Ruckus 250. And it, it's just a little 150cc. I had it in my first video whenever I first got this uh, SJ4000 going so you can see it in that and I'll have more videos with that because I tend to ride that bike more than I do this bike uh, I have a Ducati Diavel exhaust that I modified onto this bike and it's a touch too loud to be leaving at uh, 4.30 in the morning whenever I go to work so I tend to ride the scooter or drive the cage uh, going into work. But for the most part I ride the uh, that scooter almost full time. I drove that daily for two or three years. Well, uh, two years. I'm sorry, two years. Um, I drove that daily for a few years and then got the Bonneville out of mothballs and out of storage. Ugh. This is a uh, construction entrance here. I probably should have not come this way. But this is where that big construction project, the water park's going in here, the Lime water park that I was ever so schooled on on the... Uh, you grew up in Oakville Forum on Facebook. So I took the Bonneville out of storage and started riding it around, but it has this uh, the the pegs are ever so slightly behind you, and they really bothered me. It really bothered that leg just started irritating it again just something with having this leg back you know like that and it wasn't like sport bike you know it wasn't like you're all crouched down into a sport bike uh, position but it was just enough that it, it uh, aggravated that left knee so kind of did some soul searching in the, that Bonneville I wanted one of those ever since they came out with the new uh, Triumph Bonneville, the Hinkley Bonneville in the early 2000s. I wanted one of those for the longest time. So I got it. I was able to ride it and I, I only put like 2,000 miles on it and unfortunately I had to get rid of it just because the it, it hurt my knee so bad. So I had been looking at these bikes I had seen a gentleman in Estes, Colorado, and I guess it was 2006, and he was a, uh, he owned a dealership that was uh, bringing, it was a Harley Davidson dealership, and they were going to, I guess they were testing some of these to bring him into their showroom, and I think he sold s several other brands too. He was out kind of in the middle of every, in the middle of nowhere, so he, you know he kind of had to sell a little bit of everything. But uh, 
So he had two of these, and uh, I seen one of these in Estes Park, and it was the first time that I ever saw it, and I really liked it. And I stopped and talked to the guy, and he was an older gentleman, and he was uh, riding one of those kind of like on a test ride, and he had already put about 7,000 miles on it. He took a few weeks off and had just been driving across the country with it. And this was at the time when these bikes were unheard of. I mean, they're kind of popular now, but, um, you know, not so much as like a Japanese brand. But So anyway, this was, you know, pretty un wasn't wasn't really popular so there wasn't you know a lot of parts and stuff around for them and you know dealerships were few and far between and you know it's pretty gutsy on this guy to take one of these things out and uh ride it cross country and they handle the highway pretty good like i said they're uh 650 v twin with a lot of power and it's a high revving v twin like you've seen in some of my takeoffs, I've kind of got on it a little bit. <clears throat> but they run really good. He um, he did tell me, you know, he ended up having some problems with uh, the stator and the uh, voltage regulator. Regulator rectifier, I guess is what it is. And, um, you know, that he had to replace them at a... A friend's dealership in the middle of nowhere on the bike and you know they basically replaced it with used parts off another bike and now this is pretty common uh, Hoyo Sung still puts pretty bad electronics at least in the the stator and the the regulator rectifier supposedly the regulator rectifier was was the uh, was the bad part of the whole system and and I realized that once one of those goes, it usually takes the other one. But uh, we're just making a big circle here. But anyway, uh, you know, what's really popular right now is what he did, uh, you know, years ago to this bike. You know, he put a Ninja 250 Stator into it. And he put a... Uh, Moff, moff set regulator into it and wired it up and you know that's something that they should have addressed years ago the bikes are pretty nice but there's guys that are still having problems with them but that's pretty much you know mainly the only issue but you know when I had my Triumph I was reading about the same things you know with the Triumphs you know different like the street triples you know burning through voltage regulators you know and there's big write-ups on their uh, form about it but uh so it isn't anything new with bikes you know if you're a bike rider you know that you know the electrical system on bikes you know they're they're pretty taxed but um You can have issues with anything, I guess, but more so with these. You kind of know when you get one of these bikes that, you know, you might have to do this upgrade. And this bike has a, uh, a EX250 stator in it, and it also has a, uh, a 2013 Yamaha R1 uh, Mofset regulator in it. And I didn't do anything. I didn't reinvent the wheel here. You know, I just followed what everybody else did and uh, wired it in and it's been really nice uh, this makes the whole bike run a lot better when you got good clean voltage running to it it also helps that you don't get stranded on the side of the road with a garbage voltage regulator or a stator that this one guy commented on that on the coil the ko riders forum that it looked like it was wound by a whole bunch of drunken toddlers by hand and my original one <laughs> pretty much looked just like that everything else on the bike looks fantastic uh, but you know they're getting these cheap parts to put in the electrical system on it but 
enough about that. I mean, other than those, you know, two little issues, um, I had an oil leak on the uh, primary cover, I guess the clutch cover, and that happened about a, a week after I bought the bike. And I bought the bike new. It's a 2009, but I, I bought it in 2013. And I think the story was with this uh, dealer, uh, Hoyosung of America put me in touch with them. And the dealer, I guess, had bought a whole bunch of old stock from a Honda dealership that used to sell these things at one time. And he had a handful of these things left over. And this color combo wasn't my first choice. <clears throat> they only had a handful of col colors in 2009, which is actually a lot better than most uh, bike manufacturers. I mean, most of the time, you just get one color. They just change that color every year. But the paints on it is pretty nice. Uh, it's a lot better than the earlier ones, I can tell you that. Um, it's pretty light. It's got a lot of chrome-plated plastic on it, just like every other new bike besides a Harley. But it's a pretty good runner. It, I have absolutely no issues with this bike with my knee whatsoever. I put some of these... You can look down here and I put some of these Hoyosung floorboards on it and other than they could be stand to be tilted back a little bit rotated back towards me a little bit I don't have any problems with them I've got fairly short legs I'm only 5'8 on a good day so the floorboards really helped out and the seat's a little bit com more comfortable than my Bonneville. My Bonneville was just like sitting on an ironing board, but this this one actually isn't too terribly bad until you get going going on to about two or three hours of riding. But anyway, so that's the park. So I just figured I'd ramble on a little bit about the park and the uh, and the bikes. So hopefully this will give you some insight on what the uh, SJ4000 camera uh, can do with a uh, internal mic or external mic. And like I said, I just have this uh, plumbed into my helmet, and this is just a cheap HJC helmet. So I have it plumbed into my cheek pad, my left cheek pad. And the uh, helmet, or the uh, the camcorder, as you can see, is just mounted to the side of my helmet here. And I'll tell you what, I I've uh, I've had some reservations about putting this camera off the side of my helmet, but I know this is kind of where you get the best kind of uh, first-person view, or you know, next to the closest thing of being on a motorcycle view. And some guys mount them on the tank, but you know, a lot of bikes vibrate and whatnot. But I'll tell you one thing, when people see this camera hanging off the side of your head, and my wife and I were just discussing that, they turn into completely different people around our neighborhood, and, and I'm sure many Oakvillians that are watching this video can attest to this on, we hit, you know, you're allowed to park in the, in the street, or on the side of the streets on some of the streets, obviously not like this one because it's a painted line street, but if it's just like a concrete street, you can paint, you can, you can, uh, park on the side of the street and nobody gives two cares about uh, you know, coming over into your lane you know to get around a car and, and it's like they don't even care oh, maybe I shouldn't have it in whatever there uh, you know it's like they don't even care they'll just run you over but I mean I have seen people duck in behind cars when they see that I have this camera on my head and it's hilarious and of course, you know, everybody wants to wave at you because they know, you know, they're going to be on YouTube or whatever, and that's fine. Uh, but it's nice to, you know, some of the things I like about riding around is, uh, you know, when I was real young, I, I wasn't allowed to have motorcycles until, you know, I got older and came home with the mini bike, you know, when I was about 11 years old or so. But when I was real young, uh, you know, motorcycles were kind of forbidden in my house, and I'm uh, 38 right now, 
and uh, you see these kids uh, you know in their backyard and waving at you and stuff and run along the fence line you know just seeing that you're on a bike you know and you're able to capture some of that you know stuff on the video that's pretty cool I always thought that was pretty neat so anyhow we're just gonna head on back to the house this park's only about uh, about I guess three miles away from my house four miles away from my house uh, it's really nice and of course the big Jefferson uh, Barracks National Cemetery is over there I'm sure you can read all about that if you want to oh. Some crap on the ground over here Hopefully this exhaust that I put on here isn't just totally drowning everything out. Um, I really like it on this bike though. We're real limited to what we can get to put on these bikes, especially here in the States. The, the motorcycles are more popular over overseas and there's more, um, there's more, I guess, uh, accessories for it. But, you know, you kind of, it's either you know you pay a real high price you know to get parts shipped over here from overseas or you know you try to make something fit so I had started out with the a twin pipe setup that I had made for myself on this bike and I used some um, uh, Harley Davidson Dynaglide uh, Reinhardt aftermarket slip-ons and they sounded pretty good but they hung a little too low in this bike um, if I pull over here and let you look at it you know you can see that it's kind of a, a sport bike styled uh, cruiser so you can really lean over on this thing and I noticed that I, I kept hitting the uh, pipes and scraping them up and those things are really expensive I think I paid like 300 bucks just for the slip-ons alone so I took them off and put the stock can you know cannon back on it's this big huge massive heavy thing and I tore the rear baffle out of it, you know, just to give it some sort of noise so it wouldn't sound like a sewing machine. Um, and then I came across a, uh, a Ducati Divelle in a parking lot. I stopped at an auto parts store on the way home from work one night and I, I seen this factory exhaust on this bike and I'm like, man, that thing looks really nice. and. I just took a picture of it and I'm not really techie savvy I know enough to get by so I had to, I had my wife uh, Photoshop it onto my actual bike a picture of my actual bike and tried to make the proportions the right size and everything and I decided that I liked it so I started looking online uh, to see looked online to see how much these things would cost and I, I found I, I started seeing some on eBay but they were going for upwards of 200 plus close to 300 dollars you know I think that Ducati's uh, near a you know 17 to 20 thousand dollar bike if I'm not mistaken and people can correct me if I'm if I'm wrong on that I don't really care but um, you know the parts are pretty expensive for it so I kept doing some searching on eBay after a couple weeks and I had had something set up on eBay to you know alert me if something new showed up there and this guy had posted one of these uh, exhausts brand new with like five miles on it for like 75 bucks buy it now and 25 bucks shipped so uh, I jumped on it and I had to do a little hacking 
uh, to get it to fit. I'm a machinist by trade, so I made a flange to keep the factory Hoyle Sung header really anything wrong with it, and I wanted to keep those lines of the bike. Well, kind of get an idea of the wind noise right there. You know, if I was to go on the highway with this and keep up with the traffic, I'll just do it right now. You can hear, you know, what the wind noise would be like. I don't really ride this too much on the highway anyway. I just don't. I don't really have a need to. But anyway, back to exhaust. I made a flange. I machined a flange on a lathe that I have and uh, uh, put the correct bolt circle into it. And I cut the angled pipe on the uh, Ducati stock muffler system and just adapted it to fit the bike and those bikes had a pretty throaty sound and they're a uh, I guess an L twin you know it's still a V style twin bike like this is the specs on this bike are real close to the early SV650. It's not the same motor. Everybody keeps saying that. It's not. It's Hoyosung's own motor. It's just very similar to the uh, original SV650 motor. So you can get an idea what exhausts are going to sound like on these bikes by just looking at SV650 motors and whatever exhaust you like. Try to throw it on your bike. This road's really bouncy here got flooded out a few times and buckled right there and they just keep shaving the buckle concrete off and throwing down blacktop over it and then the blacktop bu black buckles. So you can really lean this bike over. I mean I don't, I'm not, I don't go crazy with it but you know for a cruiser bike you can really get it over in the corners. I'm sure a much better rider could do it. I mean I scraped my floorboards so far on it but I threw the Ducati exhaust onto it and made my own uh, 3 8 inch thick 3 8 inch by 1 inch uh, aluminum bracket to go off the original uh, muffler stand on the bike we can pull over here in this little the Elks Lodge entrance and I can get off the bike and give you an idea what the bike looks like. I know this video is kind of ran long. Some of these videos are pretty boring to people but some of the guys like them. So we'll pull over here real quick since there's never really a lot of people here. We'll keep it keep it running here now I'll open up the face mask and we, or the uh, shield and we can get an idea what it sounds like so this is the left side of the bike I pretty much just kept it stock I mean it still has some of the stock warning stickers on it that are in like Kringlish but um, I took the stock uh, stickers off the tank and I had the top of the tank wet sanded and buffed uh, just because it had some orange peel. It still has some, but it was really bad when I got it. But uh, that was no big deal. It cost me about 105 bucks to get that done. And this is the right side of the bike with the Ducati Diavel exhaust onto it. And the, the bikes come pretty, pretty well set up from the factory. I mean, you see the uh, upside down forks and the uh, twin discs in the front. It really needs to have um, braided brake hoses in the front uh, and the rear. But this has, uh, e I put uh, EVC pads on it 
uh, just because I had, I knew on the forums getting into it that you know the brake pads were kind of shoddy but uh, it has Bridgestone battle axe tires on it from the factory and I don't have any problems with them it's either a love and hate relationship with them with uh, some guys I, they were better than the Metzler or whatever tires that were on my my Triumph that's for sure uh, these feel a lot more sure-footed and it probably helps that the bikes longer and lower too so you can get an idea what the bike looks like there and what the exhaust sounds like if I rev it up it'll probably sound like crap but So this is the first year for the fuel injection, so it kind of has the goofy um, uh, Makuni, kind of an afterthought fuel injection on it. Uh, I have done the TPS adjustment on it, uh, but it's a good running bike. Um, I was really hoping that I would be happy with it after getting rid of the Bonneville, and I have been. Um, You know, it has some, you know, quality issues here and there, but my Bonneville did as well. You know, there were some quality issues as far as the fasteners on my Bonneville. And everybody says that those are pretty much as close to a Honda as you can get, you know, in terms of quality nowadays. The Triumph, the new Triumphs are. But I've been pretty happy with this thing. Um, really not much else to say about it. They changed the name on it. It's called the uh, Aquila Pro uh, now. It used to be this uh, Avatar. But uh, it's a pretty nice bike. So we'll just go ahead and get back on it and get home. I can see over there it's starting to get dark and it's <clears throat> the and the uh, Dayton, Dayton time if it's on this camera is absolutely wrong I just haven't messed with it but uh it's a little bit before noon and it's starting to look like it's gonna rain we'll just turn around here and head on back to my house uh, this area that I'm going through right here just for uh, uh, you know notation for anybody in Oakville uh, this is the Oakville Elks Lodge here that's been here you know since I was a kid longer and this area that's all overgrown here to the right and you can see some headstone or some tombstones over there hopefully I caught them in the video there <clears throat> um, this area that's in front of me used to be uh, Robert Koch Hospital and if anybody wants to do any searching and learning on that you can check it out on the internet but uh, it was a big tuberculosis hospital, and I'll make note here, this, this uh, woods that's all overgrown here has thousands of old tombstones in it. And uh, this hospital was a uh, uh, tuberculosis hospital, and I think it came online late 1800s early 1900s and uh, you know tuberculosis was tuberculosis was uh, pretty bad if you look right there you can see the old sign that used to be there for or I'm sorry the sign base that was the uh, for the old hospital but the hospital was a tuberculosis hospital and I think it was like a six or seven building complex and I could be wrong uh, when I was a kid it was all still standing and like I said I grew up around here and it was all still standing we used to go down there all the time and sneak into it and get in trouble and get our parents all pissed off at us and stuff until they started putting a big security fence up around it and then putting a security guard in there but it was a big tuberculosis hospital and uh, all those uh, gravestones tombstones that are in there are you know were the patients that died there and that ground that I showed you that's overgrown is just owned by the county and they don't do anything with it I guess 
Uh, but the tombstones that are on that Oakville Elks property there, that, uh, they, you know, keep those trimmed and neat. But the ones uh, cleaned up, the ones in the, um, the ones in the woods. Whoop, oh, missed the gear. More worried about the guy on the right. Uh, the ones in the woods aren't, um, you know, were probably kept up, you know, up until about the 60s or 70s or so, and then they, you know, everything just went to hell. It, well, it didn't, it didn't go to hell. I mean, uh, you know, antibiotics, you know, started coming online, and uh, uh, there was just no need, you know, for that hospital anymore, you know. It, uh, tuberculosis wasn't as much of an uh, epidemic as it was back in the day. So uh, I think that was an infirmary for a while. And then, uh, you know, they closed it down in the late 80s, I think, or mid-80s. And it had been basically running on a, you know, limited crew anyway, uh, before I was even born, I think. But, so anyway, that's just something pretty interesting about that little area that I stopped there to take pictures of. Or, uh, not take pictures of, but show you the sides of the bike, profile of the bike. But it's looking like it's getting ready to rain. I think I just felt something, felt something on my hand, so I think we're going to end it there. I'll uh, talk to you guys later.